Yeah, I know this is going to be painful though, so. But I want to do it with family. Hi, my name's Katie Jane Swallow. I'm here today with my new family. We're not related through blood, but we are related through trauma, and we're all here together. Today I'd like to talk a bit about why my son means so much to me and what happened before he was born. On the 13th of April, so on the 20th of April 2013, my late fiance, my high school sweetheart, was killed in a road traffic accident. I was there the entire time. We were in the car with his father and his youngest sister behind him following as he knew the way back to the foster house where I was staying. We were only three minutes behind, that's it. We saw a bumper in the middle of the road, his dad turned, around, turned the car around and that's when I saw his helmet in the side of the ditch. Still on him. His dad tried to tell me to stay in the car but I wasn't having it. He needed someone there. But the day before he proposed to me, he was the love of my life, he was my high school sweetheart. We got out of the car and found him lay there with his helmet still on. Uh, his dad tried to get me back in the car so he could take me back and his daughter back so he could get his wife, but I wouldn't let him. At the end of the day, he needed someone there because there was no guarantee that he was going to make it or that he was even still alive. I couldn't drive. I was 20 weeks pregnant. He was 20 hours and he was 20 years old. His name was Kieran Stephen Lovell. He wanted to adopt my baby. He saved me from my baby's dad. He got me out of a very, very difficult position and I still live with the torment of seeing his mangled corpse when they put the heart monitor on him and there was a flicker and he gave us a flicker, but flicker of hope and then he just went dead again. That day afterwards, after it happened, after it had been pronounced dead at the scene, I would return back to his home with his parents. Me and his mother went straight into his room. We were going through his stuff because we didn't want to believe it was go he was gone. It, it was a nightmare. It was a real nightmare. And in his bottom drawer, we found adoption paperwork that he'd got so that he could adopt my son. But the only thing missing was my son's name, my son's date of birth, my name and my signature. That's it. When my son was born, he was called Kieran Lee Seamus Campbells. He was named after my high school sweetheart. Because of my son's dad, I had no choice but to change his name. I was getting threats non-stop and my saviour was gone. I live with that on a daily basis. My son helped me through that. If it wasn't for my son, I wouldn't be here today. I tried to kill myself after my fiancé died. And I'm not proud of it, but I did. And if it wasn't for me being pregnant with my beautiful baby boy, I wouldn't be here. My son saved my life. And losing him is worse than worse than if he was dead because I don't know where he is. I don't know if he's safe, which I don't think he is. I can't see him. I can't talk to him. It's his birthday and his dad won't even let me talk to him. But all this is giving me a new sense of life and mortality and because of learning how and brutally learning how fragile life is. I became such a positive person, I saw the positive in everything, I saw the love in everyone, I don't see negative in people, obviously I know there's people out there that just want to cause drama and cause harm, but when they first start talking to me I don't see it that way, it takes a lot to push me over the edge, it takes a lot for me to turn around and say I'm not your friend anymore, and for me to say in a previous video that Thomas Joseph Russell, you know where I am, come and find me, my son's dad, I don't care, he sold me to his friends when I was living with him. He took all my electronics from me. I couldn't contact any of my family. I was beaten on a daily basis. And there was nothing no one to do about it. And when the police finally came and got me, I thought I was free. I thought my son was free from him. I thought it was never gonna happen again. And that wasn't the case. Social services helped him take my, kidnap my son when he didn't have a relationship with him just to get my daughter. My son is the most beautiful, kind-hearted, loving little lad that you will ever meet. And he's so polite and well-mannered. All he ever wants to do is meet people and meet, make others smile. That's it. That's all he wants. And at his dad, he can't even do that. He's not allowed to. And it's hard. It is very hard. Because I know my son's not safe there. My son's turned up to contact centers <coughs> with a big bald patch on his head. A scratch down his throat from being strangled bruises, black and blue, busted lips. I've got all the pictures, all the proof. I stepped them to social services and they told me I was overreacting. Like it was nothing. How does a, a three-year-old bust their lip 
and the way it was busted, yeah. even where he normally normally where he fell over and bit his lip, it'd be at the side, this one was here. All the inside of his mouth was busted, it looked like he'd been punched in the face. I just want my baby some, I just want my baby boy to know that I love him so much and he's my angel, he's my everything. He's my Superman and he's been my Superman since before he was born. He saved my life when he was 20 weeks, but there was another 20 week old fetus. He saved my life and I'd never ever do anything to jeopardize him or to hurt him. I wouldn't even shout at my kids because my kids gave me life. My, I didn't give my kids life, they gave me life. And I can't see them get hurt. I've got to make a stand. And I've named and shamed people today. And I applaud anyone, anyone who can get the courage to do that or at least tell their story. Because kids are getting hurt. The public needs to understand we're not out here for ourselves. We are out here for our children. Our children are being hurt emotionally and physically. And it needs to stop. The public needs to realise children are getting hurt. Children, innocent children who didn't want, who didn't ask to be here who didn't ask to be put into the care system or to be adopted or removed from their parents. They didn't ask for any of this. My son tells me every time I see him how much he misses me and how much he loves me. He tells me he wants me to come home. His, fa his father and his, their grandparents tried to take, well, taught my son to call me naughty mummy Imogen. My, my son used to call me mum mum, not mummy. And that's something that I used to hold very, very dear to me. The only people who knew he called me mum mum were me and very close family. And all of a sudden he's calling me mummy when he's there and saying things that are true. And I don't blame him. I don't blame him for it. He's just doing what he's been told. I mean, he's only just turned five today. He's got no fault in this. He's got no role to play in this. He's just a pawn in a sick, twisted game. My son's being bullied and he can't talk to the one person he can trust. How is that fair? How is that right on him? We need justice for our children. We can't have this happening to our children, to our future grandchildren. We can't have this happening. It happened to us and it's the worst pain possible and I wouldn't even wish it on my worst enemy. I really wouldn't. And it's not it's not the parents I get the parents are getting hurt, but it's not the parents who are getting hurt the most. It's the children because they're growing up thinking that they're not loved and they're not wanted. And I love my babies. I want my babies. If I didn't want them, I wouldn't have had them. They mean so much to me that no one, have, I, could, I couldn't put it into words even if I tried. They are my life. Without them I have nothing and I'm a shell of who I used to be. And I know that. And I'm not proud of it. And because of losing my kids I've tried on multiple occasions to end my suffering. And I know that it's just a way of passing it on to other people and to stop my pain. But it's the only sort of pain relief that I can think of that I work long term. For now, I'm stood here fighting and I'm going to continue to stand and fight. Anyone who wants to contact me, you're more than welcome to contact me. Thomas, Rachel, Daniel and Jane Thomas, if they want to find me, you know where I live, come and find me, see what happens then. Because I ain't backing down. You come and get me, you come to my house, you'll be in here behind where I am now. And I'll be taking justice into my own hands and I'll be taking you to court. Wow.